Glycolysis for the MCAT in 180 seconds. Glycolysis is going to be taking place in the cytosol or cytoplasm of every single cell. This means it's an anaerobic process, does not require any oxygen. The goal of glycolysis is to take one glucose and we're going to be producing two NADH, two net ATP, and two pyruvate. The reason we say two net ATP is because we have to invest two ATP at the start, but then we'll build four at the end, thus two net ATP. Glycolysis will mainly occur in the postprandial, it's also known as the fed metabolic state, when we have high amounts of blood glucose and we need to be making ATP. There's three enzymes that you need to know, gluco or hexokinase, PFK1, and pyruvate kinase. You need to know the reactants and products of each of these enzymes. Glycolysis is promoted by insulin. It's also promoted by high blood glucose and low energy slash ATP conditions. And there's an enzyme called PFK2 that responds to insulin by increasing production of a molecule called F26BP. And F26BP will directly promote one of our glycolytic enzymes. It's going to be inhibited by the hormone glucagon, high energy or ATP levels, and negative feedback. Basically, if we have a whole bunch of products, whether that be pyruvate or ATP, we don't need to be running glycolysis anymore. They'll go back and inhibit glycolysis. Now to talk about the rest of glycolysis, we're going to be starting off with the 6-carbon sugar glucose. We're going to be using an ATP to produce the molecule G6P. This will be done by glucokinase in the liver and pancreas or hexokinase everywhere else. They're the same enzyme, they're just located in different places. For the MCAT, we get to skip over a few steps until we get to the molecule fructose 6-phosphate, still a 6-carbon molecule. We're going to use another ATP to produce the molecule F16BP. This is done by the enzyme PFK1. The PFK1 reaction is the committed or rate limiting step of glycolysis. It's also promoted by the enzyme PFK2, which responds to insulin in order to form more F26BP. This molecule F26BP will directly activate PFK1, therefore stimulating glycolysis. We get to skip a few more steps where basically we're taking this six carbon molecule and breaking it into two three carbon molecules. The steps that we're skipping over are going to be producing two ATP and two NADH. We're gonna end up with two phosphoenolpyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule. We're going to be running PEP through pyruvate kinase. This will produce two more ATP, as well as our ending product, pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule, so there will be two of them. So per glucose, we're going to be producing two pyruvate, two NADH, and two net ATP. Finally, it's important to note that prokaryotes do not have any membrane organelles. And so because of that, they're not going to be losing any ATP shipping things over membranes, which costs energy. Eukaryotes, however, do have membrane organelles, such as the mitochondria. So we're going to be losing a few ATP per glucose because we have to ship things like NADH over that mitochondrial membrane, which will cost a little bit of energy. That was glycolysis for the MCAT in 180 seconds. You can watch the full video or find my other free resources at the link in my bio.